that kind of brings on to our next topic. Um, nice segue. Like transition there. Um, so PlayStation um, has announced, well, actually, Jim Ryan, uh, the president of PlayStation and CEO, he's uh, announced previously that, you know, Xbox's Game Pass, although it's a service it's that gamers are liking right now, it's not something that is sustainable and has previously spoke out against the service and kind of shut down any rumors that PlayStation would come out with something comparable. Mm. However, times change as, as you know, <laughs> passes, and it seems like he's saying something a little bit different now. Um, Jim Ryan, he was talking to Gamestra, and in an interview with them, he actually disclosed that PlayStation is working hard on a response to Game Pass. He didn't go into detail about what that a service would look like, what if it will be PlayStation now, or if it's going to be something completely new. But he said that he's looking at more sustainable options than Game Pass. I know we've talked on the show before about, um, you know, PlayStation and maybe having to come up with something in response to Game Pass. And now it looks like we kind of talked our way to the present day. Like, I think we're psychic <laughs> here. Um, so I wanted to know, like, what you guys feel about this news, because can this be a real shift for the console for PlayStation 5? Can you guys give me a be. quick rundown about what the unsustainable of the Game Pass is currently for people that don't know? He didn't go into detail about what was not sustainable about Game Pass, but I think it was like he did talk in the interview about how Game Pass does focus on like the develop like a bunch of different it's a library of like hundreds of games mm, and right. how they also put new releases on game pass so i think he was more talking to the new releases going to game pass while also living in this library of like old mm. old games from all these other developers right yeah uh um, I, I think from a business perspective it's incredibly smart for sony to get in on this um because I, th I think we talked about it a couple times uh, in the past, but Sony is doing exceptionally well at delivering high quality experiences, but it doesn't, they don't get ahead and uh, deliver these like competitive consumer friendly strategies that Microsoft does. And I think over time, people are gonna start catching up to that and say, well, why aren't I getting this? Uh, I've been invested in this ecosystem for so long. Why don't I have something like a Game Pass? Especially now that you know Sony is increasing the cost of like for, uh, first party titles, t uh, increasing ten dollars. Uh, I think people are going to slowly start saying, "Well, you know, I could be saving a whole bunch of money on Microsoft's end." So Sony does should and does need to get ahead of this and develop their own kind of uh, Game Pass competitor. Yeah, this is uh, this is the one thing that Xbox has like the major upper hand with for the console. Mm -hmm. Like for just like their console specifically. Um, but I think even if PlayStation starts to develop something to kind of combat Xbox Game Pass, I don't think they're going to try and bring that to PC the way that Xbox has done with yeah. Game Pass. Right. I think they're going to try and keep it on their consoles. And so still Xbox Game Pass will be the ultimate deal in my opinion. Now granted with PlayStation, if they were to do something like a Game Pass for for the PlayStation, you might see exclusives like things like Spider-Man, God of War showing up on their horizon. Um, so that, that'll be huge. Things like that could be really huge for PlayStation, no doubt. But because there's such a large player base of people who play games on their PC and now have an avenue to do so at a really affordable price with Game Pass, uh, mm -hmm. that's still going to be something that's very huge for Xbox, a big upper hand for them. Um, so we'll see what PlayStation is going to do. I think, though, at the end of the day, for Xbox to have introduced something that has made Sony be like, wait, hold on. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> like, it's it's honestly, it's good for consumers because at the end of the day, if you have a PlayStation, if you have an Xbox, or if you have a PlayStation and a PC, you're, you're potentially going to have two subscription services that give you a really affordable option to play a mm -hmm. ton of games monthly. And that, that should be seen as nothing but a good thing for everyone. Yeah, it's still a competition between PlayStation and Xbox, and they're trying to see who can be the better console, if you will, or what could be the better brand. But at the end of the day, we're the ones who win because of that. It's good that Xbox is finding ways to really make Sony budge, to really make them think about new ways to 
kind of win over the consumer because then the consumer wins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, any form of competition between PlayStation and Xbox is just going to improve both of their services from a top-down yep. view for the consumer, right? So, like, we want to be seeing them, like, announcing these things. We want to see PlayStation, like, come out with, like, a new type of subscription service so that Xbox can rethink their subscription service and make that better, right? So, overall, everyone's, like, winning yeah. somehow, right? So, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's like, it, that's why I think, like, the whole idea of the console war or just any sort of, like, random debate, whether it's something like Marvel versus DC, it's, like, it's dumb, like, don't have a preference realize and recognize when one brand or the other is doing good things to create that level of competition to then want to make one brand or the other strive to yeah. like to reach that greatness you know you yeah. you can't just want one like giant mega corporation winning and ruling all then you have disney that owns yeah. everything you know? <laughs> like if you want yeah, you want PlayStation or you want Xbox to keep fighting to figure out, you know, with Xbox falling behind so so far in the uh, the Xbox One or PS4 generation, with them falling so far behind, they decided to do something like Game Pass to try and win some more people over. So that's the kind of results that you get out of competition. It's a right. good thing. It is a good thing. And you're right. Like this whole illusion of a console war, it's, it's so stupid because like n there's other consoles as well. Like no one ever bundles the Nintendo switch into the That's console. True. War. It's yeah. always like PlayStation yeah. versus Xbox. So it's mm -hmm. not really a war. It's just these two factions going at it. Um, mm -hmm. If you really want to define it at that. But I think the reason why no one ever bundles bundles any Nintendo products in there is because they're seen as this other family-friendly console. And what the problem is, although I do love my Nintendo Switch, you have issues like online services in games on any Nintendo console that will never be fixed because there's no competition to Nintendo mm -hmm. for, exactly. for their audience. If there was mm -hmm. like you know, I can't even, you know, if Squad created their own, you know, console that was very successful and it was a family console and we had our own, like, you know, uh, mascot, the Squadder, or the Squatter. Okay. The squatter, yeah, that's yeah, the mascot. Yeah, yeah. There we go, we have it. Sure. Um, you know, but people loved him. You know, he was charming. He wasn't a plumber, but maybe he's a mechanic, you know? Like, <laughs> if you had that competition and it was like, really pushing Nintendo's buttons, that's something that Nintendo would be like, okay, what can we improve on our online services? Let's do it, right? So, yeah. so that competition is needed, um, especially mm -hmm. when you have these two consoles that have been so close to each other throughout generations. And it's, it's great to see that, you know, like you mentioned, Xbox was able to push the buttons of PlayStation and it's not just Xbox, it's also the community of gamers that are seeing the value of what Xbox put out there. Um, that's really pushing PlayStation to create something different. Now, we, you know, Jim Ryan did mention that we're not going to see, like, I, well, he kind of hints that we're probably not going to see any new titles debuting on whatever this subscription service right. is. Right. Do you think that's a mistake or is that a smart move for PlayStation knowing how powerful their exclusives are? Uh, it's I think, smart because people, people are going to yeah. buy them. Like <laughs> <laughs> people are, they're if, they, if they're not <laughs> like, listen, Xbox, Xbox is doing that. Like they're doing a thing where like Halo infinite will become in a game pass, stuff like that, because mm -hmm. they know that that's going to help boost the subscription service. And the more people that they can have applying to that subscription service, you know, we've talked about this before. The idea that, you sign up for a subscription service, you put your credit card in there, and then maybe you don't even touch it for six months, but you pay for it for yeah. six months. You know, right. so having those new titles, things like that, it definitely wants to entice people to subscribe to those uh, things. But at the same time, for PlayStation's perspective, they're like, listen, you're gonna you're gonna pay your sixty or seventy dollars for our games, okay? <laughs> and PlayStation fans will gladly do so when it comes to a brand new exclusive when god of war ragnarok comes out that thing's gonna right sell. Here. i have it yeah. ready to go exactly you know? when spider-man 2 comes out it's gonna sell like crazy yeah. if they put that stuff on a subscription service like yeah that subscription service will be huge will they make though as much money as they would have if people were just buying this copy of the game separately maybe not so i think i think it's a smart decision on their part well it's the same thing that they're kind of doing with playstation now 
Arrow, um, where games like God of War come out like two years later. Of course, the people who are going to buy day one are there day one forking out the cash. And then, mm -hmm. you know, maybe two, two years down on the line, they're like, okay, God of War, Ragnarok will come out in 2024 or something on this Game Pass service. Um, I, I think it's incredibly smart because then they're getting their cake and eating it too. Yeah. 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 It makes complete sense. Paul, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. I don't play consoles, but... Uh... I know, I know. We're talking about... <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting to hear everyone's uh, perspective because I, 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 I don't know. Like, Are you guys personally like God of War fans? Like, Are you, are you guys excited yeah. to be Person. Yes, so, oh, I like, right almost fell off my chair when they revealed. <laughs> yeah, right I'm feeling like super great for for it, right? Because people who are in that community, people who are interested, like they're for sure like just gonna snap into it and just get it, right? So, like, yeah. I well, then from from an outsider's perspective, like, would a Game Pass for PlayStation entice you to pick up a console? I think it would have to be in like I, I don't have like my own personal price that I can name right now, but if it's mm -hmm. at a price point where I think to myself, wow, like if this is all I have to pay to get like this bundle, I definitely would, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, well, let, let's take a look and compare it to like Xbox Game Pass. So Game Pass Ultimate, for instance. So it's, I think it's like fifteen dollars you get Game Pass yeah. and then Xbox Live as well for, yeah. per month. Would that? If it's if it's anything close to to that, for sure, because I know yeah. uh, my 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 brother who owns an Xbox, he's into that community. That's the price point he pays. I go to his mm -hmm. house all the time, play like Xbox games, and it's probably by far one of the best investments we've made as like a, a team just to. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right? So, like, if you had those PlayStation titles that come out and they like, they are like appealing to a certain audience from an outsider's perspective, then yeah, for mm -hmm. sure, for sure, mm -hmm. you would. Yeah. like get into it so you did mention something they're bundling and i know a uh, hunter slasher in chat also mentioned i'm just gonna read uh, their comment i don't think it's gonna be something new bundle playstation now with playstation plus and put way more support into the service than they currently do doubt we'll see day and date day releases and date, yeah. day and date releases with uh ps yeah. so really yeah the release uh launch launch releases on whatever that service is. And mm -hmm. I, I think we're all on the same page with that. PlayStation knows the power of their exclusives. They know people are still going to fork out their money, like you mentioned, Caboose. So why put it on that service, especially when they're testing the waters? We don't yeah. know if the service will be good, right? Um, let's take a look at another service PlayStation did that was really great at first, PlayStation Plus. This was like introduced when... Both, you know, Microsoft and PlayStation were like, guess what? You're going to have to pay for internet access now. Um, and we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> but then they, PlayStation was like, and you're going to get games. If you, if yep. you subscribe mm -hmm. to our online services, you're going to get a couple free games every month. And those games were fire. But now we look at that R service. Rocket League, Rocket League exists yes. to this day because, because of, of PlayStation that. Plus. Like because yeah. of PlayStation Plus, it yes. is as big as it is. You're absolutely I mean, Fall right. Guys, that's another one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But then you do have a few months where you're like, what are these garbage oh, yeah. titles? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, no, honestly. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm being 100% serious. Like, no, it's true. Like, there's garbage titles on there. And when I look at my Game Pass, I'm like, there's so much other cooler titles. Like, even if they go back to, like, the PlayStation 2 era and bring those into PlayStation Plus membership where you could play it now backwards compatible or, like, just give us a new, like, not even remastered. I take the crappy graphics. I take that over this random game that you guys are just bundling it in there to, you know, make peace for, you know, this deal that you made with all the people that bought into this service. Like, it, it's so bad that I feel like, they don't put a lot of love into it anymore because it's just something right. that is automatic. They know that their mm -hmm. player base has this service because there's lots of games that you have need it to play online. Um, and they're just like, we'll just, this is just something that's ongoing. Just throw, throw something from Colin Zed on, you know, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. And, gaming list. Like it, it, honestly, I hope we see more love and long lasting love go into this answer for game pass. Right. Yeah, I, I, honestly, like you look at PlayStation Plus in general, and again, that is a byproduct of the competition right. between Xbox and PlayStation. Now, 
Granted, it's a crime against humanity that Xbox winning the 360 generation convinced PlayStation to be like, you know what? We're going to make you pay for online too. How about that? You know, because <laughs> that, was, that was the one thing where every time someone argued about the PlayStation 3 versus 360, people would be like, yeah, well, why don't you, why don't you fork over another 60 bucks for a year of online, buddy? Uh, yeah. So, you know, and, and then next thing you know, PlayStation was like, you know what? If we're going to lose this console generation and they're paying for online there, why don't we just... Uh, we we'll just steal a little bit of your money here too. But they were smart about it and they were like, we're not just going to do that. We're also yeah. going to throw in some games in there. And I think yeah. that that was a really good idea. Then you get something like Xbox uh, Games with Gold, which to be honest, hasn't it's really rough. made any noise in no. a while. Should they, um, just get rid of it? should they just get rid of Games with Gold? I think they should. May, yeah, I if really they have think Game they Pass should. at this point, yeah, if they have Game Pass at this point, like, there's just no there's point. No, if, there's just no good games on it. Like what's the? What's no, the like if yeah. you look at this past year, I don't think that I've ever been enticed to go out and rush to my Xbox to be like, okay, I'm going to download this game. Yeah, I've mm. been like, maybe I'll get around to this one. Maybe. Yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> you know, as a kid, you you're like, okay, I'm going to play tic tac toe in class. You know, the teacher doesn't know. It's so yeah. exciting. It's so great. But then you're introduced to video games, and you're like, whoa, there's a whole new world. The games with gold games. It's yeah. tic-tac-toe. Like tic <laughs> I'll, even, I'll even challenge challenge you guys, the Camille and Caboose. Do you even know where games with gold is in the new UI? I don't. That's how often I, I go and look at it. I think you're right. Uh, I, I could not tell you where to go to, to redeem have those games. <laughs> no. Yeah, I got no idea. And I where used to know like with the back of my head. <laughs> Yeah. It's so bad, but like, I really, you know, I've been saying this before. I've mentioned it before. The best way for PlayStation to go about this is yes. Bundling, like you guys mentioned, like Hunter Slasher and chat mentioned, um, but also bundling it with the PlayStation now. Um, PlayStation now does have mm -hmm. some great titles. I use PlayStation now. And the only reason I started using it because I was gifted it, the service um, from a friend for my birthday. When I start mm, to explore yeah. it more, I'm like, oh my God, they have Harvest Moon, Save the Homeland. Like, I love this game. Let me go back, boot it up. And I don't think I've actually completed a full game on PlayStation now, but I do like it because I could just jump into like all these different types of games and like just try different things and then go back to like my PlayStation exclusives to play like when I'm right. done with my break from them, right? So it's, it's like this great service that could be 10 times better if they get better games on there if there's a library of even like previous gen exclusives um and they tried to do that with the playstation plus collection um for playstation plus members um but i think it just needs to be this one place and maybe it is when you pay for the because before it was like you had to pay for the access to internet and then they started introducing all these different services that it's like oh now i need to pay another service fee and another service fee and we saw xbox saying no you just pay this one fee and you get access to all that stuff playstation kind of needs to do the same and then up the level I don't think they need their exclusives on it, but they, they do need to give us something a bit different. Um, do you think right. that we will see kind of like an evolution of the service where they're buying out studios to make exclusive content for this service? Probably not. But then again, I guess anything is really possible here. I just don't see Sony wanting to go like all in on this. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think they're, I think they're, mm -hmm. Not necessarily worried is the word I'm looking for here, but they've certainly the, the Xbox Game Pass has caught their eye. You know, mm -hmm. they see the potential in that service. They see what th this long game that Xbox is playing because they're smart and they got good, a good marketing team and they know that eventually a couple of years down the road, something like a Xbox Game Pass could be really dominant in like the games industry or just like for the consumers who want to buy and play games, right? Um, and so because they see that potential, they're like, well, let's see how we can figure out a way to not necessarily match that, but to have a service of our own that we can promote, that we can market and showcase the uh, affordability of. So in that sense, because they're not as worried, I don't think they're really willing to, to put all their stock into that service and go all out and buying studios to make games exclusive for that or things like that. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's Xbox Game Pass has caught Sony's eye. 
And yeah. because of that, they're, they're going to have an answer for it eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I still don't think we're going to see, like, you know, Xbox is available on all these different, uh, sorry, Game Pass is available on all these different devices. Um, the Rods in chat says Xbox Game Pass has the potential to be the better Stadia eventually. And I, I think it's because it, it's now with cloud, xCloud, it's cross- mm -hmm device right like you have access to it no matter what you could play on your pc paul if you wanted to sign up for game pass you have that option there um mm -hmm. and then if you do x cloud you could play on your phone right um i don't think we're gonna see that at all i think whatever playstation introduces is just gonna be on the playstation consoles and probably will just mm -hmm. be for the playstation 5 to tell you the truth I, I don't see them going back to try to rework the ui to fit on the playstation for like, I, I, it just may not be something that they are interested in doing, especially with the PlayStation Plus collection. It was just for PlayStation 5 um, as right. a way to help sell the console, but it may also be a glimpse at what their plans are in terms of focusing their services for their their next gen um, console mm -hmm. as well. Um, so I, I wanna actually ask you guys, cause I've talked a little bit about what I would wanna see from a service like this. What would you guys want to see from a PlayStation Game Pass service? It's a great uh, question. Yeah. Um, I the only thing that could come to mind is something like a bundled in uh, PS Now with already what Microsoft's doing with Game Pass. I just want to see really cool uh, games that would otherwise fly under the radar for me uh, show up on this Game Pass subscription and just bundle it in with PS Now and kind of evolve that platform because. Camille, you said that you use it. I've only used it once when it first uh, released. I was like, okay, this is cool. I have no use for this. I, I want a reason to start using it. So if they bundled it in with that, I'd be cool with that. Um, but I can't think of any any like selling feature that Sony could come out with and uh, entice me to purchase it uh, other than delivering really great games. Yeah. For me, it's tough when, when they're not going to have the promise of something like day and date exclusives coming to their service. Yeah. Uh, it's tough for me to want to even invest in it. Now, really? granted, I, I understand why they're doing that. As I spoke earlier, I get why they're doing that. Um, but like, for instance, with Xbox game pass, like, I'm all in on that, especially if it means that I'm going to be able to get Halo Infinite for pretty much, what, 15 bucks for the month? Um, mm -hmm. and, and granted, like, to that point as well, I don't really play a ton of games. Like, I, I like to just, I stick with one game, I play that for a while, every now and then, you know, with the new console launch, I'm playing something like Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, I'm trying out a couple of different games, but I'm usually right. sticking to one game at a time. I get a little overwhelmed sometimes. Um, so, so game pass isn't like the most ideal subscription for me in general as well. Um, so if PlayStation weren't going to be promising day and date exclusives, then there really isn't much for me to be like, well, I have to get it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I need you guys to educate me for a second. So for the Xbox game pass, right? Is mm -hmm. it a yep. permanent library of games that just get added onto you constantly? Is that how it Yes works? and no. So okay. first party games are permanent. Uh, anything right. like Microsoft or Xbox Game Studios, and then the rest of it is like a Netflix carousel. Yeah, so they could drop in one month, and then like six months down the road, or three months, or even the next month, they're gone. Um, yeah, right. And that kind of introduces like the scary part, like how you mentioned Caboose exactly. earlier, the uh, PlayStation Four answer to paying for um, internet was to add in games, but also make players or gamers play, uh, pay as well for that service that, mm -hmm. you know, quite frankly, I think it should have been free. Um, but um, now when we go into this, now PlayStation entering this market of subscription services, what if they do decide to put their exclusive on, but it's not at launch and they only have their exclusive for a limited, or maybe it's at launch, but only a limited time, 30 days. Like it opens right. the door for like the scary way that services could go. Like right now we're enjoying it because for the, most, I think for most titles, um, they're on for a reasonable amount of time. Um, mm -hmm. But like TV services with Netflix, we're seeing this fight between like all these different type of streaming services where they're yeah. trying to get the exclusive to titles. So say one day, like um, I know Fortnite's free to play, but give me another like pay 
battle royale type of game. Apex. 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 Warzone. Apex. Sure. Like if it wasn't yeah. on, um, you know, is a Apex is on the EA store, right? EA? Yeah. Or Epic, uh, store. Yeah, yeah. Epic store. Epic store. Is it? Epic no, store. no, 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 no. It's yeah, Apex on Apex everything. Is on Origin. It's on and now it's on Steam. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah it's so, on Steam as well now. So imagine if you're a player playing on Apex and now you want to play on console. Apex is available on the PlayStation uh, mm -hmm. Plus like streaming service or whatever they're going to call it. But now it's gone. Okay. They are now mm -hmm. coming out with it. You've been playing it for like a year or maybe even six months. And they're like, okay, it's off our service, but it's going to Xbox Game Pass. Like that, that I feel right. like that's my only fear with streaming yeah. service in games like all around the board because we're seeing that with like TV and movie streaming services where it's like, yeah, Oh, know. now I could watch Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but I'm not going to be able to watch it on Netflix. I have to get another subscription. So, you know right. what I mean? Like, we're seeing like this, this yeah. interesting shift um, so, in terms of how streaming services work. So an example of this, um, for instance, destiny's new expansion that came to game pass, right? I, uh, that's correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And is it staying on Game Pass? That's a good yeah. Because what if you're investing a ton of hours into Destiny Two and you're just now getting into it through Game Pass? You have a ton of progression, and then they're like, "Okay, we're getting this out of here to bring in a new mm -hmm. game." Yeah. Uh, and you're like, "Oh, wh what do I do now? Do I have to buy the game outright? Uh, how does how does that? That's, yeah, an that's an interesting point to bring up. That is an interesting mm -hmm. point to bring up." And like how place, I, yeah, go ahead, Steve. No, I was just going to say, I think the only thing that they might be able to get away with is because of the implication that these games aren't just being given to you. Other than like the first party titles on Game Pass, you're already stepping into the subscription knowing that you don't own these games. Um, mm -hmm. You're just paying for access to them. So I think at the end of the day, like even if uh, you do see these like, you know, streaming, let's call them streaming battles where uh destiny's expansion does go away that's kind of the the risk you get into when you're start when you start investing so yeah. much into a subscription service you don't own any of these games you're not entitled to have these until the end of time that's yeah. just right. the sad part of it do, though right like what you could do is like let's say you're into like this destiny game right and you progressed it but you didn't finish it and it's done mm -hmm. for the month or it goes to the service mm -hmm. you can also have the options that you can actually buy right. the game but yet now you have it you know what i mean like is that is that an option you think like like because i see if that's, if that's they the do have works, that they do have that yeah. option where you because i can definitely see yeah, myself it's an playing, option where you can playing the subscription service where like let's say for 15 bucks a month i get to play like these big triple a titles and then i progress through it and like i don't really finish them right i get halfway mm -hmm. through and then if i do want to finish it if it's out of the subscription service i can always have the option to buy the game and keep it forever right yeah. like if it goes mm -hmm. on the service and if that's the if that's the case of where it goes i think that's a, that's actually a decently appealing like uh like service because I'm, I'm i'm the type of guy who doesn't really usually finish games to begin with so i think mm -hmm. having the option to have like to play and dip my toes into all these like games and then have the option to commit to it fully later i think that's pretty cool so something I so would it's more like a test trial for you because then the whole yeah. for me what's appealing with game pass is that you get that day one like launch game on Game Pass, which is crazy to me, right? Uh, mm. Gears, like, I, you know, I never thought, like, we would see those huge uh, exclusive for Xbox on a service that's like $15 a month, $15, $16 a month. So right. then does it start losing its appeal because something like this Destiny expansion, if it does leave Game Pass and say you're a huge Destiny fan and you have an Xbox and you're playing on Xbox, do you lose the value of Game Pass at that point? Oh boy! Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm here for the tough question. Yeah, that's a. That's, it's that's just, a heavy it's just I guess it it depends per thought. consumer. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know. So are you guys um, like are you guys for like game subscription services? Other than like obviously the benefits of affordability and having that exposure to um, gamers that may not be able to play games, like having them being able to play uh, some games at launch. Are you guys for subscription services in game? Because, you know, like I mentioned there, it can get kind of scary and uh, rough in the waters in terms of how it leads down the road as more players buy in. Mm. 
I think I think for me, I'm personally very on board with the subscription services, at least the way I play video games, because mm-hmm. I, I think I only really play one to two games extensively, like, and then every other game I dip in, it's because my friends play or because my other family members play, right? And um, if I'm, I, I, I can't even tell you the amount of times, like, during a Steam sale or like, a game sale, I've bought games that I've really only played for, like, about an hour, and that's, like, 20 40 bucks going down the drain every time right and yeah I, those games. I bought yeah. fall guys i played it for like two hours and that's like 20 30 bucks down the drain right and <laughs> <laughs> so i feel like if i have the subscription service where i'm paying 15 bucks a month and i do get to play the flavor of the month the hottest games that are coming in and then getting that taste and then having it kind of like phase out for the new games coming in, the, in like the next few months. I think that's that's great for like a player like me and people who play games like me, where they only play one game really and then want to try out other games, you know? So Yeah, I think yeah. that's a good way to put it because like I said, it is like per consumer, you know, because uh, there may be some people out there who just, they want to play like 10 different games, you know, they and maybe they don't even want to play like the entirety of the game. They just want to jump in for like two or three hours with a bunch mm-hmm. of different games just to see what's out there what the variety is like maybe they get hooked to one of those games and start to play for longer than that um but there's also some people out there who yeah they, they just want to play one game from beginning to end and yeah. let that be the game that they play for the month and then maybe that game's going to get cycled out and a new game comes in for the next month or maybe just the next month they pick another game to dedicate their mm-hmm. time to and i think that even in doing that you really get a lot of value for game pass being just 15 nice. bucks with the online included um but you know maybe there's someone like me who wants to play something like destiny 2 i want to put a ton of time into it i don't want to just put like a month's worth i want to go long term with this game i want to level up my characters i want to go i want to do raids i want to do all, every single activity there is to offer in that game but next month it's being cycled out so yeah. now not only have i paid for game pass but i'm also about to pay full price for this game as well so that i can get full access to it you know, mm-hmm. and, I, and I'm now I'm in a position where I end up paying more so than I would have if I just bought the game. But I guess at the same time, Game Pass acts as a testing ground for you to see what games you're into, what games you're digging. It's almost like renting games, um, yeah. except it's just it's way better than that. You know, uh, Plus it's, not really, it's not really prohibiting you from even buying Destiny 2 from the get go. Right. Like you don't have to buy the Game Pass, do you? I I, I might understand. You do well. You do have to pay for Game Pass to. Well, I mean, Destiny Two is free to play, free, but free to play right, right, right. expansion. Yes, if you want the expansions, right. if you want like right, the right. Uh, the newer content, then you'll have to uh, you'll have to try it out through Game Pass, uh, or if you just uh, buy the game, that is. Yeah. Got it. So, All right. Well, we'll we'll have to see who chooses what, um, especially when it comes to this new uh, PlayStation service or services as a whole. Who knows? Maybe like you know a. Maybe Steam will come into the mix and be like, oh, we have our own streaming service kind of thing that, you know, it's going to bundle all these cool titles. So we'll just have to wait and see. But for now, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back.